Hello, what's up everybody? My name is Mario Picciardo. Welcome to another episode for the Uninitiated Methods is a podcast where I get on, we kind of just talk about whatever the subject at hand is. Uh, we kind of let it go in a free form way. I don't come here with a script. It's not filtered or censored. It's raw. And we're just going. So let's jump into it. Last time that we recorded, uh, yesterday, there was um, really a discussion around media and the role that media plays in determining what people are talking about, you know, what, whatever we see on the media, whatever we don't see really determines what gets covered. What, what, it, what's on people's minds? What are the conversations people are going to have at work with their family, with their spouses, with their friends concerning politics? You know, things have gotten so polarized recently in the news and TV over the last two years, really ever since the president got elected. You know, everybody everybody thought, oh, it's going to be Hillary. Everyone in the back pocket of the Democrats thought that she was going to win. There wasn't going to be any issues. And then ever since the election, there's been nonstop negative news coverage of, you know, this president. To illustrate how bad things have gotten, you can't even say the name of the president on YouTube without facing penalties. They won't recommend your content as much to other people. They flag it as, oh, not suitable for most advertisers. And uh, this, is, this is the state of politics. It speaks to a huge fear that the media has. That they're trying so hard to convince the public, to convince the people... This person's bad. This person's evil. Uh, anything that this person does is... L l let's put it this way. Uh, the squad, you know, Alexandria Ocasio, Tlaib, uh, and those other two freshmen... They've been made to be the, the face of the Democratic Party. And one of them, AOC, is, is, is comparing the condition of, you know, the people who are being corralled at the border, certain people that don't have certain papers, as you can see what I'm alluding to, that they're being treated the same as a certain ethnic group that was victimized in a certain major second conflict that concerned the entire globe at a time of uh, intense, intense conflict, if you get my drift. And saying that the two are the same that the conditions of people who try to sneak into this country is somehow the same as atrocities committed during that time, during that period of time. Because this is how polarized things have gotten. They've called this man the worst possible names in the book. He's been demonized. He's this... Well, I mean, they've stopped short of calling him Satan himself. 
that this person is, is Satan, this person is some, you know, incarnate evil. And as I was reading Saul Alinsky's Rules for Radicals, this is a subject that kind that constantly got picked up. This idea that you want to make your enemy appear to be evil. You know, you want to draw a clear distinction between your side and the enemy side. And in this case, our side is uh, the side of justice. We fight for morality. We fight for everything that is well and good and honest. And we are ideologically correct. And our opposing enemy are heartless, uh, evil, incarnate devils. And that's the game that's really played. And so you're either on our side of the fence or you're on their side of the fence and there's no middle ground. And if you're somewhere in the middle, well, then you're in the enemy side because you're complicit because you don't do anything and we hate you and we want you to suffer the same fate. And the propaganda doesn't stop, but it speaks to the fear in co- uh, on the on that side that they would reveal themselves by taking all of their media outlets and pushing this rhetoric against uh, op- the opposing side. I've never in my life, and I'm sure many other people feel the same way, never have I seen this kind of polarized propaganda. Propaganda trying to... and. It's worse than propaganda. They they post things, you know, the Washington Post the the posted a story whose headline said that the president was urging unity against uh you know whatever was going on. People on the left just sort of freaking out and they, they condemned the New York Times. People canceled their subscriptions on social media. And they were saying, they were, they were really saying, how dare you support this person who is evil? Because the people who are on this side ideologically, they actually do not, cannot actually understand that uh, you there, there can be good sides to a person. To them... This person is can, can and only is evil, and any t- any attempt to paint this person in any other possible light is, quite frankly, untrue, and it is shameful. And that's exactly, and that, that's even the words that were used. New York Times, this is shameful. We expect you to do better journalism. And of course, their definition of journalism was whatever is in agreement with whatever they're saying. They went so far as to say that Obama was not uh, ideologically on the left. They said ideologically he's actually on the right. Just to give you an idea of how far left these people have gone. I So there was a, something that was trending. It was... Uh, it was something along the lines of i'm disloyal i'm i am disloyal to the president something along those lines and when i saw that i was shocked yeah it, it's not easy to be i mean it, well <laughs> it's very easy to be outraged right we we're, we're an outraged culture but I was shocked to see that specifically trending because, you see, when you say disloyalty, I find it hard to be disloyal to the leader of a country and yet somehow still be loyal to the country itself. So when I saw that trending and and I saw how many people were posting about it, I, I said to myself, wow, I think this is incredibly stupid. I cannot believe that People are rallying around this. It just shows how 
crazy things are that people would think that this is okay regardless of what you think of the person look no no one's that bad right no no one is doing that bad of a job that you have to say you're disloyal to this person and even if you are disloyal to this person the office should be shown some level of respect whether you look whether you like it or not this person was elected and they were elected by a large margin by the people of the United States. They were they the people elected this person. This person deserves a level of respect, deserves a certain level of um you know uh so support. And even if you don't support the person himself at least support the office and if uh, support you know the the fact that your fellow man made this decision that a majority of people who voted said we don't want hillary in office that that was a thing that happened but to swear disloyalty to the president is in my eyes at least over the allegations which have turned up to be false. I mean, there was no collusion. Um, there wasn't any obstruction. The charges now are about racism, but they have no proof. The fact of the matter is, is that there's no proof for these allegations. And even if the allegations were true, were true that this president was or is racist, uh, the economy is doing better than it ever has ever done in the last, since uh, the Great Recession began. We're doing really, really well right now. So why, where is all of this negativity coming from? And when you look at it, it's not coming from anywhere. It's coming from the fact that it's just popular that over the last couple of years, it's been pushed out to the public uh, constantly, constantly that you shouldn't like this person, that you shouldn't want to hear from this person that, uh, you know, because after story after story just spins lies about this person, whether they're true or not, people kind of get the gist, and then they're in the echo chamber. You have people in, in invading news organizations, tech companies, who are also spreading the same nonsense statements. Many of them lies or spun stories just to paint this person in a negative light. And in a world where people only really read the headlines and, and those are manipulated and taken advantage of for their own political agenda, yeah, we're going to end up in a, in a society where people think that this person is the devil incarnate. And that's really unfortunate because the, the, the facts aren't there. And even if they were, even if this person was this person who... Um, didn't like people of certain backgrounds because of the color of their skin, even if that was true and it was provable, like let's just say he admitted to it. Look, I'm someone who's going to look for what is the best case scenario for us as a whole rather than uh, if it comes down to it, even someone's character. I'd rather have someone who is really rude and really mean, who is really good at keeping us alive, giving us jobs, giving us a strong economic foundation. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, that's what I think the majority of people care about. Do they have a job? Can they feed their family? Are their lives good? And I think that it's when you upset that balance and they lose their jobs and they don't have a place that they can go and their lives are actually are sucking and their livelihood is reduced to that of a third world. Like I think it would have been if Hillary was elected. Then, well, I think people are going to care more about that than if this person doesn't like people of a certain skin color. In fact, I think it's, I don't think it's completely silly, but I think it's just silly the how demonized someone is. And look, let's all be honest, all right? Everybody's at least a little racist. 
Okay. I don't think that there's anybody out there who's completely 100% doesn't see skin color. And you know what? That's fine. That's human to have some level of tribalism. That is a human thing. You look at someone, you say, oh, that person looks like me. You feel at least a little bit subconsciously connected to that person. Scientific studies have shown, you know, when someone looks like you, you feel a closer affinity to them. That's normal. That's a part of the human experience. So, no, I don't care if this person even hated people from my background. As long as people from my background were given a great opportunity, if they're doing better under this person than they ever have been economically, I care about that. Is he actively putting roadblocks out there against people of my background so that we can't do well? That's what the left would have you believe. But it's not true. If anything, that they've, they, they've shown their colors and they've shown themselves to be disingenuous, to be liars. And I think it's really hurt their credibility in the eyes of the general public. I think that there are a lot of people out there who will never trust the news as it exists right now. I think there are a lot of people who are not going to go to the Washington Post or the New York Times to any of these major places because at this point in time they see the level of bias, the level of dishonesty, and thankfully the president calls it out so that people can see it for what it is. These people are a bunch of liars. They lie constantly. And we shouldn't be give, just just out there giving, their, giving them our time. These people haven't done enough to warrant getting our, our time, getting our getting any of our attention. So that was something that uh, was bothering me. I was also on Twitter. I like to respond to a lot of the conversations that are happening on Twitter. Um, to a lot of these stories, some of the stories that come out from the Washington Post, New York Times, where they're kind of just writing stories that are like, oh, the president did this, which was bad. Like, for example, just recently, the president made comments surrounding Jewish people and... Uh, saying that they shouldn't support Democrats because the Democrats, like uh, the Somalian one, the Somalian one from the squad, she was saying that we shouldn't provide aid to Israel. And Trump said, uh, well, there, go, there we go. I tried not to say his name. I said his name. Now this, is, this episode is also going to be removed from the suggestions and stuff like that because YouTube is so, so all about their censorship. That's fine. I'm not going to edit it out. <laughs> um, the uh, And so she says that we shouldn't provide aid because she wasn't allowed to visit Israel. And the president says, well, you see, in light of this, uh, it's foolish for Jewish people people to vote Democrat and because clearly they don't care about you and they don't care about Israel and uh, they took those that statement of him saying Jewish people are foolish and immediately these you know the Washington Post the New York Times they, they run their pieces oh Trump says anti-semitic comments racist when literally Less than a week ago, when, you know, the squad was saying this, were, were, were saying uh, how bad Israel is because they didn't let them go there. 
and even before, because you know the media is complicit. They did not they did not call them out as as anti Semitic squad. No, why? Because they're Democrats. Because they're prominent Democrats. Because they're complicit. Because they're 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 so biased that they think that one side of the aisle literally can say whatever they want to say. And even after they've said that we should restrict aid or not provide aid to Israel, they're still not getting covered in a negative light for that. If you can believe that, just Trump, for, for, the, comment, for, the, com, for the one comment that he made, that's insane. That is actually crazy. That's the level of bias. That's the level of dishonesty that we're dealing with. There, there's been no coverage of the the, the Portland uh, violence from Antifa. No coverage. In fact, they there was one story that got brought up where oh, I think it was one person from the Proud Boys got into an altercation. That story was talked about. That story was published but none of the stories from the other side of the aisle. And you really have to wonder and sit here and think and say, that is a little odd that one side is going to be covered and the other side is not going to be covered. I'm not going to be exhaustive on the point, but it's, it's there. And for what, when whatever the reason is, if you want to say it's it's just the employees that they're radical, as Tim Pool says, um, you know he doesn't he's not a big conspiracy guy. He doesn't think that there's much, you know, of a of a group of people you know trying to do, actively do this well. I don't I don't know about that. I think you know Silicon Valley particularly is a, is a big echo chamber and everybody's ideologically has the same beliefs over there i think i think i think a lot of the people who are getting into these you know san francisco west coast seattle offices portland offices are pretty heavily democrat the people who are getting into these prominent positions so you know, whatever the reason is, I mean, the reason is more arbitrary. The, the The important thing is that it's happening. Whatever the reasoning is, the fact of the matter is that the cultures, the societies, remember the one ex-Google employee came out and said, it is hostile, that the workplace is hostile against people who have conservative ideas. Well, what do you... What are you really supposed to say about that? Is the company not responsible for the conduct of its citizens and the conduct of its employees? And I think that when these heads of big corporations end up going to Congress, the one thing that they always say is, oh, but we have so many employees, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. Well, your company has an incredible amount of influence. I'm sorry that you have however many thousand employees, but you have to make sure that your thousand or so whatever employees, Google, I, I, I know I'm underscoring it. They actually have way more than that. I'm sure it's around like ten, tens of thousands um, and a lot more in some cases. You have to make sure that your people who have access to these things aren't taking out left wing, right wing sources. You, 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 you have to make sure that this is not happening. And we don't care that you have tens of thousands of employees and that it's hard and you can't, you know, monitor everything. Well, you better start monitoring everything. You better hire 20, 30, 40, 50, however many people it takes just to do this because the power that you have as a giant tech company 
has the ability to sway ideologically uh, national elections. That's a big deal. That 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 that's that's a, it actually an, it's huge. That's huge. So we need to be tough with big tech and be tough with a lot of these people. Take them to task. Open the antitrust suits because um, it's becoming increasingly difficult for people to for the people who use YouTube. For me, how, how am I supposed to grow on YouTube in an environment where I can't even say certain words? If I want to be political, CNN gets propped up, Washington Post gets propped up, all these. But if you're an independent person trying to show a different narrative, you actually get deranked. You actually get less coverage, less exposure. Because you're not a huge corporation. Corporations are actually put first. So YouTube, Google, and these other tech companies are literally deciding what's, what's, what people have the right to see and what they don't. They're censoring it themselves. So anyway, um, I just kind of wanted to cover that today. If you guys uh, like the video... Please share it because that's the only real way that we're going to get uh, a greater amount of exposure is the coverage that the sharing that you guys do helps a lot. Otherwise, we're not going to go anywhere. We're not going to get that much more coverage. So I'm depending on you guys for that. If you don't like it, you don't. If you if you don't think that this information is worth sharing, then you don't have to. It's totally fine. It's not a big deal. Thank you for even watching. Or listening thus far but if you do then that helps a lot so thank you um and let me know your feedback let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below if you like the video be sure to hit the like button it does help a little bit but sharing is definitely the biggest thing so thank you guys and i'll see you guys in the next one everyone take it easy